Welcome to Cyber Secrets. In this episode, we will discuss how to practice forensics data recovery using open source software. Start by connecting to a write blocker, forensic image the drive, and then recover the data using various methods, including tools such as Recover JPEG, Foremost, and Scalpel. Remember, when doing forensics, always use a write blocker. Now, imagine you have a suspect USB thumb drive that you want to make a forensically sound image of. Connect that drive to a write blocker and then connect it to the forensics workstation. Once plugged in, we notice that the suspect drive is full of files. Now we're going to image the evidence using the forensic imager DCFLDD. But first, we need to find the USB. One method is to simply use the DIR command, and as you see, it's at slash dev slash sdb. Another method is to use dmessage. As you see, there's a 2 gig thumb drive, and also at sdb. Now that you have the drive, use dcfldd to start the imaging process. Make a bitstream copy of the physical drive or the sdb. This takes time, a long time. I suggest finding something else to do until it's done. Uh, it's finally finished. Computer forensics can be a test of patience. Okay, let's verify the image after creation. Then make an MD5 hash of the image. I like to save the hash value into a file to help verify the evidence has not been altered after acquisition. This is a very important step. We're going to create a second image using a logical disk bitstream copy so we can mount the image as a drive. This again takes a while, but this is useful if you want to scan for malware or get quick easy access to the data. Now we're going to mount the drive. First, you have to make a directory. Right now we're going to use mnt slash test, and now we're going to mount that file we just created, test.dd, to the mnt slash test. Once it's mounted, we're then going to verify the data and just make sure that we can get access to it. As you can see, all the files that were in the USB are also in this DD. Now to get a better look, open up a graphic file explorer and navigate to the slash mnt slash test folder or that mount point that we just created. As you can see, this is the same data that's going to be on that USB thumb drive, except this is a copy and you're not destroying the evidence. Now this is just for demonstration purposes right now. I'm going into that mount folder, the VLC portable, and just opening up an executable so you can see that it can run just like it would have on the USB thumb drive. I'm also going to open up another executable and they're working just fine. So this is to show you that you do not have to have a USB thumb drive connected to still get access to the data. You can still get access through the copy. So depending on what you need it for, this is a great, easy, quick method to be able to test the data that was on the suspect's thumb drive. If you're still awake, we actually get to play with tools now. Recover JPEG is a data carving tool that looks at a drive or an image and carves out JPG graphic files. It is a good what it does, but it only grabs graphic files. The folder in the background is filling up with images, and these are the images that Recover JPEG was able to recover. But again, just as a reminder, it's called Recover JPEG 
because it only recovers JPEG images. Foremost was a pioneer in open source Linux data carving. There are many options and parameters that can help hone what it's searching for. For example, the dash uppercase T creates unique folders, and the dash lowercase a ignores file footers. The nice part about creating its own folder is that you can do foremost several times and not having to worry about emptying out the output folder. The interesting thing about the a is if you ignore footers, you're going to get a lot of false positives. The other benefit of Foremost is it has a nice little audit log, which gives you all the information of files that it was able to recover from. And as you see the numbers, but since I did the dash A, again, you will have a lot of false positives. So we're going to go ahead and verify some of the graphics. And you see a lot of the graphics are not coming up because, again, they're false positives. Let's go ahead and look at JPEGs. The icons with pictures not showing up, false positives, but you can see the rest of the pictures are showing up. This time we're going to run foremost again, however we're taking the ignored footers off, and we're going to add a specific key that allows us just look for very specific types such as .jpg files and .pdfs. This is a little bit faster carving, but again, it's going to take some time. Time is pretty much all we have in forensics, so get used to it. Now that it's done, we're going to do the same thing we do all the time and verify the findings. As you see, we're going to open up a few PDF files. This one opens just fine. The next one opens just fine. Try one more, and this one seems to open fine. You can go back into the audit log, and as you can see, the numbers have changed. We'll do one last verification with the JPEG files. And compared to the last screen where there was a lot of images that were not coming up, this almost every image is coming up as a full image. Now last, but definitely not least, is Scalpel. This tool is actually based off Foremost, and it has a few extra nice modifications. Scalpel is an easy-to-edit configuration file where you can customize the file types it searches for if you know the header and the footer of the file. All you have to do is also add the extension.